Yeah, I can speak and pause. All right. We're picking up where we were last time, which was actually yesterday. What we've already done, a little bit of a review, is we were able to find the domain that we wanted to work with. Um, we bought some other domains that we want to redirect, and now we are going to uh, now do the redirects uh, via this GoDaddy dashboard. Um, I know that we talk a lot of trash about GoDaddy. Don't get me wrong, but I'm never going to recommend this for a hosting company. I host uh, a couple personal projects here that, uh, frankly, aren't so popular nowadays because my pasta pass was dedicated to the Olive Garden pasta pass when I got that back in, God, what year would that have been? 2014? Something crazy. I had to blog for that back in the day. Uh, you use way back. You can see what that was all about. And then triple D dot life, of course, is my, uh, my personal project. So I'm using this mostly to host domains. I don't see any really issue with buying domains on GoDaddy. And just for the sake of this tutorial, we will be hosting the chili dude.com on one of these hosting uh, accounts. So I don't have to pay $15 monthly for a new one. Uh, but who knows if it gets traffic and it gets really off the ground, I'll probably find a better host for it. So the first thing we want to do is of course, uh, redirect some of these websites. So um, if you're, you know, in dashboard, you're going to see this similar in most registrant websites. Um, let's just do one. It should be relatively easy. Uh, something along the lines of management. Um, let's see, manage D DNS is sometimes where you would do that. Um, and yep, that is exactly the case. Forwarding, that's exactly what it is. We are going to be doing the 301 permanent redirect. Uh, the chili dude is the one that we're doing. Look, it's hosted. This guy's pumped up. He's ready to make this website with us. Of, of course, he's cool because he's a, probably a baker. He's got a little speckles of gray, has a nice tattoo. God knows what it is. All right. Um, so we're going to do that. It already has HTTP here. You know, preview just to make sure what it is. We'll save it for the next ones. You go to save it. Now chili dash and dash hot dash sauces dot com will be redirecting to the chili dude dot com and within maybe the next hour or two. It'll say 24 hours. It's almost never 24 hours. So why do you think that we're redirecting other similar websites to the chili dude? Well, the reason that we're doing it is because it passes along its backlink portfolio. It's going to be diminished, but it definitely passes along value and authority from having been a website with backlinks at some point in time. If you don't think that's the case, uh, I can definitely refer you to <laughs> a, the case of Conrad Sam over with um, Mockingbird Mar Marketing. I believe that's their name They're actually here in Seattle. And he redirected a whole ton of websites to a Moz article or a Moz.com. And that alone, because of the, the content and the authority of those websites haven't been forwarded, having a lot to do with dog snuggies, Moz on its own actually ended up ranking really high at the top, if not number one for dog snuggies when you did that search. And that had to do a lot, a lot with redirects. So passing along value definitely has an impact. So basically I'm going to do this several more times. And at the end of it, I intend on having this, 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 and this domain all directed into chilidude.com. And that is going to be the first way that we start to build authority to the chilidude.com. Great. So I have just redirected all those chili, all those hot sauce related um, domains that we have gotten yesterday. So you can see here, these all been managed. The last thing that's left is this chili dude. So what I'm going to do at this point is we're going to host this one and we're going to host it right here on GoDaddy using um, one of my hosts. I don't know which one is more space. Let's take a look. So I'm sure, I'm sure that there's just like so much going on with every, everything in these hosting accounts, but I'm going to look at a C panel and it should show me what we have going on. So the usage is at 22.66%, whatever that, that means for anything, everything is arbitrary in my opinion with GoDaddy. Um, so that one definitely has some um, room to be used. I'm assuming that this one um, uh, occupies a little bit more than that, but we'll take a look at this one too. 
and we'll just go with the one that has more room. So this one thinks that it's at um, a critical point with 25% left. That's fine. We'll just go to the other one. So going back, triple D life, all about it. Gonna go to C panel. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna do an add-on domain. So being that it all fall, falls in under the same account, um, there shouldn't be an issue with it syncing up. Am I sure? Was I not sharing the screen before? I sure was. Just give me one moment. Yeah, it's been sharing the screen, relax. So it knows that the domain's under the account already, so you don't have to do anything with like name servers or anything along those lines. Um, if you did, oh, let's see what's hosted here. Look at these cool ones. Um, if you did have any domains that were hosted elsewhere and it, like in your hosting's one place and your domain's another place, that's when you have to start doing name records. So you shouldn't have to worry about it here. So chilidude.com, that all looks good. We'll add the domain. And then GoDaddy's gonna basically kind of communicate with the domain to make sure that everything's set up as far as the DNS name servers to allow this creation of the new domain name. Thanks a bit. Good thing I'm going to edit this. Take your time. I should play music in the background so then I have an issue with uh, copyright infringement. Okay, so you can see that that on domain has been created. You can also tell that I've put on the instrumental metal band um, Pelican in the background. And so hopefully this gets flagged for copyright issues when this gets uploaded to YouTube. I'm just joking, I hope that doesn't happen. A little bit lower. Okay, this domain has officially been added. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna do a typical WordPress install. So this is still in the cPanel. Every single host has cPanel. It doesn't matter how crappy they are. If they're really crappy, they won't have a cPanel, but it's 2020, so I don't think that's even possible. Um, they might have their own proprietary um, backend. I know that um, one on one might do their own. I think it's terrible. Uh, Namecheap might have their own. I think it's terrible. Um, there's no real substitute for cPanel. cPanel is just the interface that makes the breakdown of all your hosting options uh, as easy as possible, and that's still the case because the majority of places use it. And um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really want anything else besides this. So you can use this just straight up uh, WordPress. There used to be like Applicious, um, more of like a hub for different CMSs that are available. Let's go through this one. Um, I'm assuming that they're gonna try to have me do it through, um, well, they want me to do it through not um, something like monster, not monster.com. <laughs> Um, well, let's just install this application. Sometimes they try to like upsell you to do um, an install. It looks like they removed it. I think GoDaddy kind of made it seem more daunting to do WordPress install than it was. And they used to try to upsell like $50 for someone to help you install it or hundred packet, like all these packages. It's all nonsense. WordPress is uh, easy. All C panels will give you the, the chance to do it um, very simply. So let's look at the domains that are available. So the thing about this is that makes it a little bit more interesting is we kind of want to do the www protocol that it was originally. Um, it's just so the pass through of the links and the way it's set up is as recognizable as it used to be as possible. Um, and then the HTTPS we did, oh no, we didn't do it with um, an SSL install. So 
you only do the HTTPS if you bought an SSL and you plan on installing it or else the um, configuration of that protocol is not gonna be correct and you're gonna probably have issues with accessibility once it launches. So let's just check if what the Chili Dude used to be and what protocol it was most commonly in. So I'm gonna do Wayback. I'm gonna do the Chili Dude. And I'm just gonna make sure that we do non-WWW or WW based off of its historical uh, configuration. So it appears that they did it non-WWW. Oh man, I am gonna take this. Oh, this is so awesome. Oh, it's a text document. Okay, I'm not doing that correctly. Um, yeah, they use it without the non. So let's do. It. Let's con keep it consistent. Let's do it with the none. We're never going to install it as a blog because we want this to actually be the the home page and the actually like functionality of like the whole website. You do it as a blog is if you already have a website and you want to kind of uh, tack on a WordPress blog to your existing website. So we're removing that. We're making sure the home page and the install is directly into the root. Most of this is gonna be fine. Um, I let it upgrade, upgrade all the time or update all the time because um, I don't want there to be any discrepancy with the WordPress version. I don't really want discrepancy with the plugin version. And the only reason that they would say do not do it automatically is because A, I mean, you can control what's going on with your website, completely understand that. But in some instances, it doesn't happen as much as it used to, but uh, if something, updates automatically can break your entire website. <laughs> so don't let that be a deterrent. Um, I am going to, I'm gonna call this Chili Dude. So you all know what the uh, administrator username is now, congratulations, but you certainly won't be able to <laughs> see what this is. So I am gonna pause it. Great, so I have my password, uh, Mr. Email. Um, is this is never going to get to anybody, but whatever the chili dude guys, I'm talking about chili plus hot sauce. I'm sure that Paul would love to expound all day about hot sauce. I personally freaking love chili. So I think this is going to be an extremely fruitful and symbiotic relationship creating this website. Um, no, this is a little bit too much. Um, this will do automatically install, I believe, a limit login plugin, um, which is fine. Um, we don't want anyone doing um, any like brute force accessing the website. And uh, this all looks good. So we'll, we will install this. So you're probably thinking about next, um, once this website goes live, um, what is it going to look like? And the thing is, is we have different options. Um, I don't think anyone's going to want to go out and hire a developer or a freelancer to just build it for thousands of dollars or go overseas necessarily. If you can build it for hundreds of dollars and then going back and forth for a while. So I would recommend some situations, especially if you want to learn how to do some more web development, is you can use some of the pre-existing themes that we'll explore together in a moment once this launches, or we'll, we'll, we'll go on Theme Forest. Um, because Theme Forest is pretty fantastic for an array of plenty of themes and they range between 30, 50, 60 dollars and they're gonna freaking fast forward your website faster than you can even imagine. So you can see here with this healthy new install, it's nice and healthy, that we just brought back the chilydude.com from the dead and this is a 20 year old website and this is going to be the foundation of absolutely everything we talk about for the next million years, okay? Um, hopefully like in this video series, but also it's going to be accompaniment, accompaniment of the podcast. Okay. So we're going to be discussing again, if, if you don't, uh, remember, we're going to be talking about how we get all the content on this website right here. We're going to talk about how we're going to do link building and building authority of this website. So it ranks for stuff. And then we're going to be talking about onsite and best practices. So whatever we put on this website, however we set it up is set up for the best chances of visibility and everything else. Um, it's going to include uh, meta titles and descriptions. It's going to include um, EAT standards. It'll include internal external linking, um, but we'll also get technical and we'll be talking about like site maps and site structure and especially taking advantage of all the options for structured data that exist nowadays um, because there's structured data for recipes because we're going to have recipes. There's going to be structured data for FAQ. How do I make hot sauce? Uh, what's, what are Scoville units? What are the hottest chilies? 
what's up, what's the um, best chili in the world? What are where are the best chili competitions? We're gonna do schema and structured data probably for events. And I'm just spitballing, but I'm just getting all these ideas right now. And we're talking about it, and then. I'll give a little bit of guidance from like a web design and how to set this up so it actually looks good. Um, that's obviously not exactly the focus of our podcast being it's SEO, but you know, if a website looks like trash, what's the point of any of this, right? So um, my login worked. Um, this sets up kind of like the database. I don't like the wizard because it's telling me I, that I can't do what I already know. I know how to do all these things. <clears throat> so I'd say the majority of people that um, listen to this podcast are relatively familiar with the back end of WordPress. Um, if not, I'm just going to run through some of the most basic, basic things that I do when setting up a new website. Um, the post name, <clears throat> whenever I do a new post, it's always going to be the name of the post. These are always the things that I just do first. And I'm probably going to forget a couple. So don't like kill me if it's like, oh man, I do this every single time. Like I get it. Um, plugins. Um, like I said, the limited logins attempts, of course, install that. Um, these are relatively deprecated. So I don't even bother having them. Um, I add all in one. Yep, not Yoast. I do all in one. Honestly, I'm not going to go back and forth about which one's better. I think they both have their merits. We're going to look at our posts. We're going to get our hello world and we're going to delete it. And the first thing I just want you to take a look at, if you're starting a new website and this is going to be a hobby or an experiment or something that you want to learn SEO with, I want you to definitely know what's going on with the themes. So 2020 um, is, is the newest one. Um, I didn't even know it just came out being that it's 2020. I guess it makes sense. But if you go to add new, you're going to see a lot of available free themes. Um, they'll all, most of these will start off as free. I'm sure a lot of them have premium versions that enable more configuration. Um, but this is a great starting point if you don't want to spend any freaking money whatsoever. So you can do it by featured. You can do it by popular. Um, you want to be more like business oriented. You can make it more blog oriented, more informational. See, this is more like news. It's called Newseum. So that's appropriate. You can do latest. So these are ones that just went up. You know, you can uh, make a blog about why girls wear hats. You can do ones about how all these uh, seashells and a starfish all came together at the same point in this beach. One about coffee, favorites. Um, how do you do that? So you can search themes and I mean, hell, let's just type in chili and see if there's, <laughs> there you go. This one is perfect for uh, a dedication or homage to chilies. You can type in hot sauce and see if someone's ever done one for hot sauce. And now, of course they haven't. So let's go to theme forest now. Now this is where you can really get some, some upscale paid ones with um, tons of documentation, tons of features, um, completely responsive, uh, plenty of reviews about them. This is going to fast track a lot of your projects. The only thing that I, I'm concerned about sometimes when I do some of these themes is that they're very, very bulky and they're superfluous with code. And some of them might like be bogged down um, by just how much is going on. So you might still have to use you know, some of uh, your skills or, or work with somebody to kind of meld into what you envision. So if we're making like a chili website, so this website's gonna be informational, it's gonna have recipes, it's gonna have a history of hot sauce and the history of chilies, it's gonna be everything you ever wanted to know. Um, what would we kind of search for? So, I mean, I'm just gonna start with, with this. Um, this is a restaurant theme, these are restaurant themes. You can kind of see already like, wow, these are pretty freaking nice looking websites already. This one's a PSD, so it's good. You know, this is from a design standpoint, um, but this is actually like the build out WordPress. That's why this PSD is only three bucks because you, you know, you uh, slice and dice it and build it yourself, but the WordPress is actually created with the backend. This is HTML, that'd be kind of a pain. Um, so I want to, I don't necessarily want to make this about 
like anything in particular. So I might come back and decide on a theme based on something that's more comprehensive. But if you were to find something here, and let's say it's like, let's go back to that chili one. And you're like, I love this one already. Frick it, let's do it. Um, it's as simple as just installing it and then activating it. And then you'll see already that our website already went from being your typical 2020 into a brand new website with a really nice bar, a nice layout. And funny enough, 14th of February, that's in two days. It's Valentine's Day. It's very romantic, serendipitous. So this is set up much like a blog. What happens here is under settings and um, I guess writing. Nope, reading. Uh, it's, it's always going to feed directly into the homepage as a blog because first and foremost, WordPress is a blog platform. Um, so you have to create multiple pages in order to differentiate between the blog and the homepage. So we're going to create a home under pages. I'm still getting used to this interface for publishing, but it has its merits. And then we have a blog. No, I just published it. Come on. blog all right so we got these two pages then we go back to settings we go to reading we want a static page for the home page it's the home we want a post page it's the blog and that's when you start to have a differentiation and then you'll do some customization you'll use widgets to get rid of this stupid crap on the side that no one cares about. You'll create a menu at the top, um, which is, is it header? No, it is not header. It is uh, menus, <laughs> of course. So your menu right now says it's menu one. We wanna create a menu. We wanna attribute this menu to something. There you go. So this isn't a um, tutorial whatsoever on how to build a website. Um, if you want to do that, there's plenty of other better YouTube videos because I'm going to be sitting here and kind of relearning things because I don't really build websites like I used to. Um, but it is important to put an emphasis on a nice build because you want to look good once you start getting traffic. Um, so let's kind of leave it at this. And then next time that we chat, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into content, how to get content, how to approach content, how to do research for content. It'll be accompanied by the podcast. And if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to drop it as a comment in YouTube. And um, yeah, let's have a conversation. Thanks.